Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. Another authentic reenactment of a case transcribed from the files of the Texas Rangers. Dates and places in the following story are fictitious for obvious reasons. The events themselves are a matter of record. Every day, Monday through Friday, there's top entertainment all day long when you set your radio dial to NBC. Listen for Double or Nothing, and you'll hear one of radio's funniest quiz shows. Yes, Walter O'Keefe consistently comes up with great comedy entertainment Monday through Friday on Double or Nothing. Listen, and you'll agree. And then there's the program with the heart, Strike It Rich. The grand entertainment that Warren Hull brings you every day on Strike It Rich is just what the doctor ordered if you suffer from the housework blues. From Chicago, Tommy Bartlett brings you Welcome Travelers and interviews with the many interesting guests who each day pass through the Windy City. And for more fun, listen for Bob and Ray, those two zany comics. Then there's Music and Charm with Dave Garraway. So remember, every day, Monday through Friday, chase your blues away with the wonderful daytime programs on this station of the NBC Radio Network. And now, here's today's adventure with the tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, from the files of the Texas Rangers, the case called Unleashed Fury. It is 3.30 a.m. during the night of April 25th, 1938. Near the town of Carnesville, Texas, Ralph Lang and his wife were asleep in the upstairs bedroom of their farmhouse. Outside the house, a car pulls to a stop. And a moment later, Lang is awakened by someone knocking on the front door. He gets up and goes downstairs. All right. Who is it? Ranger Morgan. Texas Ranger. Oh, Sorry to wake you up, sir. Oh, it's all right. What is it? You hear anyone prowling around your house tonight? I know. Why? Well, I don't want to scare you, but we're looking for one of the inmates from the state hospital. You mean somebody escaped from the asylum? Yes, sir. About one this morning. We're checking all the houses in the area. Your door's locked? Yeah. Always keep them locked at night. Uh, this man, is he dangerous? Yes, sir. He's a killer. I see. I'll have to move on now. Just make sure you keep your doors and windows locked. And let us know if you see or hear anything. I will. Thanks for warning us. Uh, nobody, honey. You go back to bed. Well, good night, sir. Good night, Ranger. Who was that? Texas Ranger. Well, what do you want? Nothing, honey. That ain't so. What's a Ranger doing around here this time of night? Now, Ginny. What is it, Ralph? What's happened? Nothing, I tell you. It's just some fella got out of the hospital. Rangers are looking for him. Why'd they come here? They're checking all the houses around here. Just wanted to know if we'd seen him. Ralph. I'm scared. Now, honey, there's nothing to worry about. Let's go back to bed. I think you ought to look around the house first. What fur? We keep our doors and windows locked. He can't... Please, Ralph. All right, honey, all right. But there ain't a way he could have got in. Besides, if he did, we'd have heard him But now. All the same. I'd feel better if, if you had a look. Okay. Ralph, I'm scared. Now, honey, you don't have to be scared. Here, I'll switch on the living room light. Yeah, you see, not a soul. You better look in the kitchen. Well, Jenny, the kitchen door's locked. I'm not sure I locked it. Huh? I, I can't remember. All right. I'll go out there. Be careful, Ralph. I will. Nobody out here. See if the door's locked. Uh-huh. You were right. It was unlocked. I'll lock it up. Now, I've looked. What do you say we go back upstairs and get some sleep? I'm still scared, Ralph. That Jenny, man... you got to get hold of yourself. Now, there's nothing to be scared about. I'll just get this light. Ralph, huh? listen. I don't hear nothing. Upstairs. 
Sounded like our bedroom door. Let me make sure. Don't leave me. No, honey. Come on, come on. Yeah. It's closed. It's upstairs. He must have been hiding in the hall. We didn't know it. I better phone him. No, no, no. He's here. You let's go. All right, come on. Shh. I take you this flame lock. <laughs> Right in our bedroom. Huh? He just let out. Jack, come on, we get the car. What's the matter? The car keys, they're upstairs. Oh, what are we gonna do? Ralph, the window. He's watching us. Come on, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> When the couple reached the nearest house half a mile away, they called the police. Radio word was flashed to Texas Rangers Jace Pearson and Clay Morgan, who were covering that area in separate cars. Ranger Pearson had just arrived at the Lang farmhouse when Ranger Morgan pulled up. Jace? Over here, Clay. I checked this place just 30 minutes ago. Mm-hmm. House is dark. It could still be in there. Let's go find out. Sure hope we get him fast. I have to think of a guy like this Charlie Brock wandering around the countryside. Yeah. Try the door. Yeah. It's unlocked. Here's the light. I'll get it. It doesn't look like he's down here anyhow. Let's get upstairs. Stay on your toes. He gets cornered. He probably put up a fight. The bedroom door's closed. You hear anything, Jason? No. Let's go in. Not here. Reckon the Langs could have been imagining things? I don't think so. Look at this. Hospital clothes. Charlie was here all right. Probably helped himself to one of Mr. Lang's suits. We'll get a description of anything that's missing. What do you figure we ought to do now? He can't be too far away. Let's go outside and see if we can pick up any kind of trail. Might not do any harm to have a look at that barn back of the house. Yeah, we'll check there first. And if we don't find any tracks, we'll split up and start covering the area. The tough part is we don't have any way of figuring what it'll do next. Uh-uh. I wish we could see that barn better. The moon's just gone down behind the hill. We'll see all right as soon as we get a little closer. Must be pretty slippery to break out of that hospital. Yeah, vicious too. You remember his case? Well, all I know is he murdered his parents about ten years ago. Parents and two sisters. Clubbed them to death. Yeah. Wonder what makes a man go off a... Hold it a second. What is it? I thought I heard something. Yeah, there it is again. Sounds like gravel rolling down this hill. Come on. Jason, there he is. Stand on that ridge. You can see a silhouette. Hold it, Charlie! Uh, wait, there's no use, Clay. He just went over the rise. How about that? They're the whole time watching us. He sure got nerve. More than that. Watch yourself when we get to the top. Yeah. And I'll be. Where'd he go? There's not a sign of him. He's got to be around somewhere. Let's keep moving. Charlie Brock's trail led through a stretch of brush and ended on the bank of a shallow creek. Clay went back for our horses and we continued to scour the area. By noon, we were convinced Charlie had gotten away. We decided that the psychiatrist at the state hospital might be able to give us some information that would help in our search. We went there. Dr. Gallus showed us the window of the isolation room through which Charlie had escaped. He had sawed the bars with a piece of string coated with wax and scouring powder. Well, that's unbelievable, Ranger. Three heavy bars and only that piece of string to work with. The patience of the man. How long was he in isolation, Doctor? Uh, about three months. Can't imagine why one of the attendants didn't notice what he was doing. It seems like he was pretty clever about that, too. Mm. Little bits of chewing gum on the ends of the bars. Probably used to cover up his progress. Look at the way those bars have been out, Jase. Took a strong man to do that, even after they were sawed through. Uh, yes, Charlie's strong. He's incredibly strong. Oh, that's my call. You want to wait here, Rangers? I shouldn't be long. Oh, we'll come along with you. We're anxious to get going as soon as we ask you a few more questions. Certainly. I was saying I, I didn't realize how strong Charlie was till we had to put him in isolation. What happened? Well, we had just admitted a young man to the hospital, a school teacher. One day he was talking to Charlie. Now, something he said must have made Charlie angry. Did Charlie attack him? Yes, he did. It took six attendants to get Charlie under control. 
He almost killed the school teacher. Was that the first time you had trouble with him? Yes, he's always been very quiet, too quiet. We weren't able to do much with him in the way of therapy. What about his killing his parents and sisters? Were you ever able to figure out the reason for it? Yeah, it wasn't easy to get Charlie to talk, but we gathered they'd always made fun of him. He'd been taken out of school when he was 16 and still in fourth grade. And his family didn't let him forget it. He was older than 16 when he killed them, wasn't he? Yes. Oh, just a second, Rangers. I have the key right here. Wasn't Charlie in his middle 20s when he came here? Uh, 24. Seems he ran away from home after he was taken out of school. He came back to see the bluff. That's his hometown eight years ago. Well, after he'd been home only two months, he... Well, you know the rest. Uh-huh. After you, Rangers. Uh, excuse me while I see what the call desk wants. Dr. Gallus, do you want me? Oh, just a minute. Uh, desk has a message for either one of you. I'll take it, Jason. Ranger Morgan. Yeah, hold on. Uh, I certainly hope you catch up with Charlie soon, Ranger. So do we. Hello? He's dangerous. He's extremely yeah. dangerous. And completely unpredictable. Yeah. Wait. There's no telling when he'll try to kill yeah, again. But you think he will try to kill? I wish I could say no. Sorry, but, uh... doctor. Uh, we better get going, Jase. Who was it? Town Marshal's office over at Rockville. Somebody spotted Charlie Brock at a schoolyard there. <laughs> We took my car and made the 18 miles from the hospital to Rockville in 20 minutes. It was 3.30 when we arrived. The schoolyard was deserted. We began looking for the town marshal. We found his car parked two blocks from the school. As we pulled up, we saw the marshal just leaving a house. We got out of our car and walked toward him. Howdy, Rangers. Boy, I sure am glad to see the pair of you. Got any leads on him, Marshal? Uh, not yet. The only one seen him was Miss Knine over at the school, uh... She's one of the teachers there. How long ago was this? Well, let's see. Uh, it must have been two hours ago. And you know, I got right out to the school. He'd already disappeared. I've been looking everywhere, doing a house-to-house now. Uh-huh. You're sure it was Charlie Brock the teacher saw? Well, it couldn't have been nobody else. Oh, Norma Canine, she don't make mistakes. Uh, she said she recognized his picture from the paper. Even if she hadn't, couldn't have been no doubt about it from the way he was acting. How do you mean? Well, uh... Miss Canine, she had the kids out in the schoolyard. And uh, she seen this fella standing outside the fence. Well, she didn't pay much attention to him. And then she scolded one of the kids a little. <laughs> and this fella starts screaming at her and carrying on crazy-like. Did he come into the schoolyard? Miss Canine, she didn't wait to see. Why, she just took the kids inside and called me. I come right out. <laughs> Darnest thing I ever seen, how I can't find him. Where's Miss Canine now? Yeah, she's over at her house. You see, she don't have no car, so I rode her home in mine. She was right upset. I guess she was. Yep. She got herself in such a state, I had to get one of the neighbors to stay with her. I tell you, Rangers, I sure hope you catch this fella fast. I don't want no part, no maniac in my town, no sir. You say you covered all the area around the school? Well, we covered every street and every house right up to here. There ain't no place you could hide for me. Not the way I know this town. But I ain't been able to find him. Now, we'll give you a hand. It's pretty tough for you to be working alone anyhow. Well, just between you and me, Rangers, I'd be happy if it was you calling him and not me. I don't mind handling traffic offenders, but this maniac, uh-uh, he's something different. We know. Our radio station's standing by to flash us in case anything happens. How will they know? They asked your town operator to call him. I'm going to get me a radio in my car one of these days. Mighty handy thing to have. Especially when you got something like this here Brock fella loose in town. Yeah, well, we'll see you later, Marshal. I uh, hope you get him, Rangers. I sure hope you get him. Figure he might still be around, Jase. I will even try to guess. How close we were to him last night. He was watching us the whole time we were around the Lang farmhouse, and we didn't know it. Yeah, and that was the second time in an hour I could have had him if I'd have known. Well, I reckon the best thing to do is cover the outskirts of town. Maybe we'll be able to spot him somewhere KTXA, along the... Unit 10. Unit 10 to KTXA. Go ahead, KTXA. Unit 10 in Rockville. Go ahead. Investigate house at 573 Oak Street. Man has attempted to strangle a Miss Laura Stanwyck. The seventh believed to be Charles Brock. In just a moment, we will continue with Tales of the Texas Rangers, starring Joel McRae as Ranger Jace Pearson. 
You've seen it happen time and time again. Children playing, a ball rolls into the street, a child rushes after it, full in the path of a speeding automobile. Perhaps the driver stops in time. The chances are he can't. And another tragedy, another accident due to carelessness is chalked up. To become a figure on next year's traffic accident statistical chart, let's all keep this year's traffic accident rate as low as possible. Stay within the speed limit. Don't endanger your life by trying to get somewhere too quickly. Better late than never may be a tired old saying, but it's also good common sense. Be alert and careful every moment you're behind the wheel. Never drive after drinking. Stick to your side of the road and watch for warnings at grade crossings. Remember, it's your life that's at stake. You can't afford to be careless. A life you save may be your own. And now let's get back to tales of the Texas Rangers and our story for this week. We continue now with Tales of the Texas Rangers and our authentic story, Unleashed Fury. We drove to the address indicated in the radio call. It was a small bungalow set a little apart from the rest of the houses on the street. When we arrived, a number of neighbors were already in the house and stood in little groups in the living room and kitchen. Two or three people were comforting Laura Stanwyck, a girl in her early 20s. She was sitting at the kitchen table. Excuse us. Let us through here, please. Folks, if you don't mind, we'd like to ask Miss Stanwyck a few questions. We won't be long. Miss Stanwyck, we're sorry to bother you, but there are a few things we have to know. It was so awful. Awful. Did you get a good look at the man? Yes. His eyes and the way his mouth... Had you ever seen him before? Only his picture in the paper. He was the man who... Oh, I'm sorry. The man who escaped from the hospital last night? Yes. Can you tell us how it happened? Well, I was standing here at the table peeling potatoes. I heard the kitchen door open and I looked around. Oh, it was so awful. Yeah, I'm sure it was. He jumped at me. made the most horrible sound. Like an animal. I felt him put his hands around my throat. Yes, ma'am? I think I jabbed his shoulder with a knot. I'm not sure. After that, I must have fainted. Is this the knife you were using to peel potatoes? Yes. Little speck of blood on the tip, Chase. She might have nicked him. Uh Uh-huh. Anyhow, it was enough to scare him away. Miss Stanwyck, you say you only saw this man's picture in the papers. You never actually saw him until he came into your kitchen. No. Were you home the whole day? Oh, no. I'd just gotten home from school a few minutes before I came here. School? I'm a teacher at the grammar school. Jeez. Uh-huh. Uh, how'd you get home from school, Miss Stanwyck? Walk? I drove. Is that your coupe out in front, the blue one? Yes. Where was it parked? Right outside the school building, where I always leave it. When you got into the car, do you remember if you looked in the back seat? Well, no, I don't think I did. Miss Go, she's the fourth grade teacher. She was standing by the car when I got in. I remember we talked a few minutes about report cards... No, I'm sure I didn't look in the back. Even if you had, it would have been tough to see anybody if he was lying on the floor. You mean he was in my car the whole time I was driving home? It sounds that way, ma'am. Oh. That's probably why the marshal didn't spot Charlie. Picked himself a good place to hide. Ranger, you don't think that man will come back? I don't know. You better have one of your neighbors stay with you until he's picked up. That awful man. I know I won't sleep till you get him. Please, Ranger, you got to get him. We questioned the neighbors. Nobody had seen Charlie Brock enter or leave the house. Working in cooperation with the marshal and a posse of townspeople, we covered every inch of the town. At ten that evening, Clay and I went into a restaurant to get something to eat before continuing the search. Tired, Jason? Oh, not too much. I don't know. Beats me how these guys disappeared. Mm, me too. Unless he's hiding someplace we haven't thought of looking. Can't think of where that would be. We've hit just about every alley, cellar, and backyard in town. Uh, you want to hand me the salt and pepper? Yeah, you are. Thanks. Like I said last night, you can always try to outguess an ordinary criminal. Figure out some kind of M.O. on him. But with this guy, you never know what he's going to do next. I've been thinking about that. Seems to me we do have something that looks like an M.O. You mean schools? Uh Uh-huh. Remember while he was in the hospital, he jumped a school teacher. And today, he was after two others. Yeah? 
Yeah, form's a pattern, all right, but why? Yeah, it's something Dr. Gallus would have to say for sure, but it sounds like Charlie feels everything that's gone wrong for him started with school and teachers. Now, suppose it's true. Suppose he's going to hit another school. Where does that leave us? We can't cover every school in Texas. No, but there's one we can cover. One that could be a pretty likely choice for Charlie. Which one's that? Charlie's hometown, Cedar Bluff. It's only about 20 miles from here. Yeah, but how can we be sure? We can't. But if you draw a straight line between the hospital and Cedar Bluff, what's it cut through? Well, let's see. It... Hey, it does come right through here. You figure Charlie might have just been sidetracked for a few hours this afternoon and maybe the place he really meant to go when he broke out was his hometown? Uh uh-huh. There's more than half a chance he may be heading for the school where he used to go. He could figure that this school is the root of all his trouble. You might have something at that, Jase. You finished eating? Yeah, I've had enough. Let's get over to Cedar Bluff. arrived in Cedar Bluff a little before midnight and awakened the principal of the grammar school, a man named Dunn. He'd been one of Charlie Brock's teachers and twice the victim of Brock's violence. Mr. Dunn admitted that he'd been more than uneasy since reading of Charlie's escape. He also felt the strong possibility of Charlie showing up at the school. The following morning, Clay and I arrived at the school before it opened. By 8.30, the children began arriving. Fifteen minutes later, Mr. Dunn walked toward where we stood, just outside the school building. Hey, good morning. Good morning, Rangers. Morning, Mr. Dunn. Well, you know, I, I've got to confess it. After you left me last night, I hardly slept a wink. I'm sorry if we bothered you, but we thought it was necessary. Well, of course it was. Oh, uh, good morning, Miss Hoffman. Good morning. I kept thinking about Charlie Brock and the trouble he gave us when he went to school here. I expect he was a real problem, huh? Yes, he wasn't. It's so strange. In most ways, he was a completely backward boy. But sometimes, when it came to covering up something he'd done, he, he was actually brilliant. And we've seen some examples of his brilliance, like the way he broke out of the hospital. Well, once you've been close to him, you, you never forget him. He was like, oh, he was like some vicious animal. I can still remember the way he looked. And that was over, oh, 15 years ago. Uh-huh. And I certainly hope he doesn't show up here with all these children around. We'll be watching for him, Mr. Dunn, just in case. Mm-hmm. Don't you want to come into my office where you can make yourselves comfortable? Thanks, but we'd better stay in our car. There might be some radio calls. Besides, we'll have a better view of the school from there. Uh, your car? I'm afraid I don't see it. Oh, behind those trees, Mr. Dunn. We got out of the way, especially for Charlie's benefit. Oh, yes, yes. And call us if you want us. Well, thank you, but I hope I don't have to. And see you later, Mr. Dunn. Come on, play. Yeah. That Mr. Dunn reminds me of a teacher I had when I was going to school in Wichita Falls. Uh-huh. Hey, you hear that, Jace? Remember how there were days when you'd hear that bell while you're still two blocks away from school? Yeah. You start worrying because you were late and there was nothing you could do about it. <laughs> yeah, except start thinking of a good excuse. I wonder what goes on in Charlie Brock's mind when he hears a school bell ring. Yeah, probably thinks it's the end of the world. Could be you're not far wrong. Well, we better get in and settle down. We're liable to be here all day. Ten thirty must be the recess bell. Uh-huh. Sort of funny about Charlie. You'd think if he was going to show, he'd have been here by now. I don't know, Clay. Maybe I was wrong. Yeah, the way you had it figured sounded like pretty good reasoning. Could be he's sleeping somewhere. Maybe he'll turn up this afternoon. Maybe. Uh, I'm beginning to wonder. If he doesn't show by this afternoon, you want to move on? That might be the best idea. Get the constable to keep watching. There's Mr. Dunn on the steps. He's waving to us. Hmm? Looks pretty excited about something. Come on, let's go. At the building. Where? He tried to kill Miss Hoffman. Oh, it was awful the way he looked. Where'd he go? Uh, uh, upstairs, I think. Come on, Clay. Right. Must be up this way. He didn't come in while we were here. Must have broken into school last night and slept here. Yeah, try that first classroom. I'll get the other one. Right. Nobody in here. Well, this one's empty, too. Might as well work our way down the hall. We gotta get... Wait a minute. Room over there. Thought I just saw the door he's shut. If he is in there, try not to make any sudden moves. Just keep talking while we work toward him. Yeah. Jay's in the corner. Uh huh. All right, Charlie. 
Come on now, boy. Easy now, Charlie. Nobody's going to hurt you. You just come along with us. He's going for that flower pot. No, Charlie. Put it down. Put it down, Charlie. Watch it, Chief! Come on, Charlie. You're going with us now. Easy, Charlie. Oh, oh, grab him! She got you! She got you! Come on, Charlie. Can you hold him for just a minute? Now, let's go, Charlie. Everything's going to be all right now. That's a boy now. Easy does it. Down this way, Charlie. Is everything all right, Ranger? Uh, Mr. Dunn, I think you better get back in one of the classrooms until we get Charlie down. Surely, Ranger. Surely. All right, Charlie. All right, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. You'll be all right, Charlie. I don't belong in there. They do. They do. They do. They do. Come on, boy. In just a moment, we will tell you the results of the case you have just heard. Later today, you'll find more great entertainment all lined up for you on this NBC station. Be sure to hear The First Nighter, starring Barbara Luddy and Olin Soule in a light comedy drama. Then it stars in Khaki and Blue, featuring talented members of the armed forces with Arlene Francis as your mistress of ceremonies. And be sure to hear the hilarious Phil Harris and Alice Faye show, featuring the comedy antics of Frankie Remley, Julius Abruzio, and Brother William. And remember, too, the Theater Guild on the Air will bring you Prologue to Glory, starring John Lund and Wanda Hendricks. Today's Theater Guild on the Air play is a story about Abraham Lincoln as a young man. Yes, Sunday is fun day on NBC because of the many fine shows sent your way to add to your listening pleasure. Later tonight, you'll want to hear Jack Parr and the $64 question as Jack asks the questions and gives away the money. So remember, for fine entertainment all the rest of the day, stay tuned to this station of the NBC Radio Network. And now, back to the conclusion of today's Tales of the Texas Rangers. And now, here are the results of the case you have just heard. Charlie Brock was returned to the hospital where he was placed in a special isolation room. Despite continued efforts at therapy by the psychiatrist, Brock's condition grew steadily worse. On November 10th, 1940, Charlie Brock died quietly in his sleep. Next week, Joel McRae in another authentic reenactment of a case from the files of The Texas Rangers. Joel McRae will soon be seen in San Francisco Story, a Warner Brothers release. In the cast, you heard Herb Ellis as Clay Morgan. The role of Charlie Brock was portrayed by Harry Lang. Whitfield Connor was Ralph Lang, and Hope Summers was Ginny Lang. Howard McNear played Mr. Dunn, and Kay Stewart was heard as Laura Stanwyck. Technical advisor was Captain M.T. Lone Wolf Gonzalez of the Texas Rangers. This story was transcribed and adapted by Charles E. Israel. And the program was produced and directed by Stacy Keith. Hal Gibney speaking. Next, it's The Chase on NBC.